They call it the Lenovo Legion Slim 7, one of my favorite laptops from 2021, and in 2022, it's gotten a few really nice upgrades. I will say it's even better than last year, but there are a few things that I still don't love about this laptop, and we'll cover those as we work our way through the video, so make sure you hang on throughout this video to catch all the details that you need if you're considering purchasing this laptop. Now this is the Advantage version, so it comes with the Ryzen 9 6900HX and the RX 6800S. So this is a fully AMD equipped laptop, and I must say that it packs a punch. I am very satisfied with the performance of this laptop, and we'll jump into that later in the video as well. For now, we're going to start with the things that I couldn't get to in the unboxing where I talked about the overall build quality and usability of the laptop. First and foremost, a sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks and sounds like. This is the webcam on the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, for those of you that are curious about the audio experience on this laptop, here is a quick sample of the audio. So if you're listening to a movie or you're editing a video, here's how the speakers sound. Now the build quality is improved over last year's model and it's slightly changed a little bit. No more iridescent logo for the Legion here or here. So that was kind of a disappointment for me. Uh, but what I did like was this very nice brushed aluminum side panel that wraps around the entire laptop. It is very refined. It's very purposeful. And the reason I say it's purposeful is because it has these sharp edges on both the top and the bottom. There's a little lip that sticks out on both the top panel and the bottom panel. And normally I would ding a laptop for a design like this. But for this one, it seems very intentional. I'm not saying I like it. I'm not saying it's the what I would have done. But what I'm saying is it was executed well. It looks very intentional to show that slimness of the laptop. It actually makes the laptop look slimmer because you're having these very specific pieces of aluminum at very specific widths and dimensions so you can see the thinness and the dimension of your laptop. Now it is a thin laptop. It's not the lightest laptop. You can see the weight and thickness coming on the screen, but I love the overall package. I'm very happy with it even as it has changed from last year. So Lenovo sent over these three Lenovo Legion 5 Pros, and as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers, we're gonna kick off a giveaway to celebrate passing the 100,000 subscriber mark. The faster we get there, the sooner the giveaway is coming your way. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, share this video, and drop a comment of how you would use a Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Of course, we still have the classic inlet here where your ports are hosted. And while we're talking about those, let's check out what we got. This does not have as many ports as the 5i Pro, but it still is well stocked. You have your power adapter, two USB type A's, and an HDMI port on the back panel as well as two vents. On the left side panel, you have two USB type C's and another large vent. And on the right side panel, you have your SD card slot, your headphone jack, your manual cutoff switch for the webcam, and another large vent. Now, I will say these vents do a wonderful job cooling the laptop. I thought, okay, we have a Ryzen 9 6900 HX processor. This laptop is going to run hot. But Lenovo was able to cool these components very well. It's honestly why I've led people to choose Intel in the past was because their components were so much cooler than Ryzen. But in this laptop, we don't have that issue. As you can see in the 4K thermal benchmarks, that's basically a nine minute 4K clip exported out of Premiere Pro. And I test the thermals and fan noise as well as the export time. You can see that we did not get above 82 degrees Celsius on the export for this laptop. Fantastic, being that the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 with the Ryzen 9 6900HS saw a two minute and 50 second export time, but had a 96 degree Celsius on the CPU. Very hot comparatively, I mean, 14 degrees more Celsius. It's just a little high than I personally like when you get up to that 100 degrees Celsius range. And again, that was on the fastest export setting. You can bump this thing down to quiet mode, still get a great export time and get 59 degrees Celsius on the CPU. So efficient, cool, quiet, that's what this laptop has going for it. Speaking of efficient, let's talk about the battery life. The battery life is good on this laptop. It's not as good as say something like the Asus Zephyrus G14, which to me has one of the best battery lives on the market for a gaming laptop 
to date. You can't get a better battery life than that laptop. As far as gaming laptops are concerned, it's absolutely incredible. However, this laptop still has great battery life uh, under the circumstances of how much performance it also packs. So this laptop, you can get around eight hours of battery life while doing productivity tasks, around six hours and 30 minutes of streaming video playback, four hours of Photoshop work. And what I do is I take the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, which is a very intense benchmark and run it on repeat till the battery goes dead. And then about two hours and 57 minutes. So just below three hours for 4K video editing. And that is a 4K project inside Premiere Pro playing back through the timeline on loop until the battery goes dead. So it's, those are all pretty intense workflows. And that's the battery life you can get out of the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. Now, checking out the keyboard, we have the standard Lenovo Legion keyboard. You have the full keyboard on the left side with your nice little curve shape on the bottom, flat top, nice medium key press. And then of course, you have your full size numpad on the right side. I don't love numpads. They're not personally something I use, but I know a lot of creators that do use them, so I don't you know, tell you to shy away from them whatsoever. However, one thing that I don't love about most Legion laptops, or really a lot of Lenovo laptops, is they push the trackpad to the left, which actually aligns it with the main keyboard, which makes sense. But personally, as a right-handed user, I end up kind of like crossing over my hand. So I kind of wish it was centered. It would make it a little more easier for me to operate, but just kind of a critique here on the Legion setup. And also this trackpad comparatively to some of the other ones like the G14 or the M16, or even something like the Apple MacBook Pro is a smaller trackpad. So I wish the trackpad was a little bit larger and more centered. They have all this real estate here for it, as you can see, We've got about a half inch to almost a full inch they could increase the trackpad here. So hopefully in a future iteration, they will do that. But for now, it is something I get a little critical about. Here's a quick audio sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what that sounds like. Now the upgrade path on this laptop, although not as good as the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro, which I am personally willing to sacrifice for the thin lightness and overall design of this laptop is still good. You can upgrade one of the RAM sticks, not both of them, one is soldered to the motherboard and you have an occupied M.2 slot and an available M.2 slot. So it's really awesome to see that you still have an upgrade path on this laptop when actually a lot of gaming laptops are removing that ability. A lot of brands are saying, eh, we don't want you to be able to upgrade anymore, which I think is totally ridiculous. The upgrade path is so essential to me as a creator when I need more performance out of my laptop. The screen has also gotten a big upgrade at a 16 inch panel, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 483 nits of screen brightness, a 97% sRGB, 76% Adobe RGB, and 76% DCI P3, all at a Delta E of 1.38. So it is a fantastic screen, great for creators. It's not the 100% Adobe RGB you might be looking for, but it is still a very nice, bright, color accurate panel. Now, without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks and see what this laptop is capable of. First and foremost, starting out in the simulated benchmarks, it hits right above the Asus Zephyrus G14 on basically every simulated benchmark. It's pretty impressive that it is showing off as it should slightly above the Ryzen 9 6900HS and RX 6700S when this has the RX 6800S and the Ryzen 9 6900HX. So slightly higher performing CPU and slightly higher performing GPU. And if you don't remember when I reviewed the G14, my main concern with it was that you should get the 6700S over the 6800S because it was a slightly cooler and just more optimized GPU for that 14 inch system. When we're now looking at the Slim 7, the 6800S is perfect. It doesn't overheat, it remains cool, it remains pretty quiet, honestly, and it performs very well inside of this laptop, showing that it was a great choice on Lenovo's part. Now, moving on to Blender, I was very impressed by the Blender Classroom benchmark. We are up near the top of the charts, just below that MSI Titan GT77, which is absolutely a beast of a laptop. And so if you're a Blender user, this will be a great option for you. Now, looking at Autodesk 3ds Max, and Autodesk Maya. Autodesk 3ds Max had fantastic performance. And then Autodesk Maya sat kind of in the middle of the chart. Still, no issues there. A great benchmark for both of those.
Moving on to PTC Creo, it actually uh, topped the charts on the different selection of laptops that I feel it is best suited with comparably. And then on SolidWorks, it is a great choice if you're going to be a SolidWorks user choosing a gaming GPU. Now, if you're a huge SolidWorks user and you've watched my SolidWorks you know, buyer's guide, you know that workstation GPUs are the best GPUs for SolidWorks. However, the second best GPUs are these Radeon RX 6700S and in the Lenovo Slim 7, the 6800S. So keep in mind that if you are going to be doing SolidWorks, these are a great choice. These AMD, all AMD equipped laptops are a fantastic pick. Now, moving forward on to Photoshop, not the best score I've ever seen in Photoshop, but still a great score at 927. I always say if you're above the 700s in Photoshop, you'll have no issues in Photoshop. And here you're sitting at a 927 with 16 gigs of RAM. If you want to get up in the thousands, you could upgrade that eight gig RAM stick to a 16 or a 32 gig stick, and you will have well over 1000 points inside of the Photoshop Puget Systems benchmark. So this is just stock 16 gigs of RAM. You upgrade it, you'll get even more performance. Now looking at After Effects, that had a good score as well at a 798, right below that 800 mark. I like to see After Effects laptops over 700, so you're in good hands here. Um, that is not the highest performing, but it is still very good. Now, as we move on to video editing, we're going to start with the Premiere Pro playback. So we're looking at the chart with 4K playback, 6K B-RAW, and 6K RED footage. This laptop is best suited for 4K footage and 6K B-RAW. For some reason, 6K RED footage was still a little heavy for this laptop. Now, it only had 4,000 drop frames, and by only, what I mean by saying only is some of last year's laptops had in the 10 and 12,000 drop frames. However, for me personally, 4,000 is still quite a bit, and I think you will notice it being kind of laggy in your timeline. So if you're gonna be using this laptop, I recommend 4K, and 6K B-RAW for this laptop. Now moving on to the 4K export time, you're gonna see a number of different laptops on the screen comparatively, and you'll see that this laptop has good performance in the 4K export. It's more near the lower end of the chart. By that, I mean it's the kind of a slower export time by about 30 seconds compared to the best export time we see on this chart. This is the nine minute 4K clip, and you'll have to wait about an extra 30 seconds. So even if you had a one hour project you were trying to export, it would only be an extra three to five minutes of export time. So it's very minimal compared to the best time versus the time that you're seeing here from the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. Now, as far as B-RAW was concerned, that did see a little bit higher export times by a number of minutes compared to say something like the Asus Zephyrus G14. It has about a 17 minute export time out of the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. So though playback is really good about 700 drop frames as you saw earlier the actual export time is a little on the slower end I, I i fooled around with the settings a little bit tried to get it a little bit faster might continue to do that and see if we can get some better results but overall 17 minutes good not excellent now looking at davinci resolve i was surprised here because we have a new ryzen 9 6900 hx and the rx 6800s and we're still seeing about a six minute and 31 second export time out of davinci resolve for 4k I was hoping for better, but I didn't get it. So if you're considering this laptop for DaVinci Resolve, know that you will have good playback, but it is not gonna be one of the fastest export times. You can see some of the other laptops on the list that take the crown. For instance, the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro was quite a bit faster, about over two minutes faster than the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. In conclusion, should you buy the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim? Well, I'm not gonna tell you until you subscribe so we can hit 100,000 subscribers by Christmas. Okay, yes, I think this would be a fantastic laptop for on-the-go creators. It has great battery life, it has great performance, it runs cool and quiet. Now, if you're gonna be a 6K video editor, I'm a little on the iffy side. I'm not like all in, like, yes, let's do this. This is the best 6K video editing laptop that money can buy. But if you're a 4K video editor, then I'm all in with you. If you're in 3D modeling, I'm all in with you. If you're a Photoshop, so you're a digital artist, graphic designer, or a photographer, uh, and Photoshop also translates into other apps like the Adobe Creative Suite, Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and then also like the Affinity Photo apps or the Affinity Design designer apps or illustrator, and then also something like Figma or Sketch. So overall, those are the things. I just wouldn't be like gung-ho for 6K. Just personally, I just didn't see the exact results that I wanted to. But punch for punch, man, this is still one of my favorite laptops, especially if you're looking at a 16-inch laptop. The build quality, thin and lightness, good battery life, cool and quiet. I like it a lot. 
Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase. Likes if this video has brought you some value. And of course, subs so we can get to 100,000 by Christmas. I'll see you in the next one.